we will have two minutes on the clock. This is our first practice question, so make sure you've got some uh, paper and pencils or pens ready. Two minutes on the clock. Your time starts now. John Anderson, a 55-year-old Caucasian man, presents to the general practice with complaints of persisting cough and shortness of breath for the last three months. He reports occasional wheezing and chest tightness. He is a lifelong smoker, currently smoking one pack of cigarettes per day. He has a history of hypertension, for which he takes amlodipine 5 milligrams daily. He has no known allergies. On examination, John appears breathless and has audible wheezing and oscillation. His temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, blood pressure 138 on 85, heart rate 90 per minute and regular, respiratory rate is 22, saturations of 96 and BMI is 26.3. The remainder of the examination is unremarkable, what is the most likely underlying diagnosis for John's symptoms based on the given information. Provide three appropriate responses. All right, how did you go? Uh, again, so you can see kind of my technique I like to use. It's all about making sure I'm locking in the best information possible to make sure I've got the best chance of actually answering that uh, the question that's being asked. Uh, so again, this is what is the most likely underlying diagnosis based on the given information. They want three appropriate responses. Now, immediately I'm making sure that I'm going to be only providing three appropriate responses. Thus, one, two, three. I'm getting that list out there so that I know I'm going to be giving those responses and not giving any more. Uh, avoiding overcoding. Uh, I tend to underline the important piece of information that I think might be pertinent to the case. And let's have a look at what some answers might be. So, uh, this is, I think, a case that's screaming out for COPD, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary uh, disease. Again, remembering that we are wanting to avoid uh, using abbreviations whenever possible. Now, it is clinicians marking these exams, and so there is a little bit of common sense leeway. Uh, however, they have stated again and again, if you... Pardon me. If you really want to make sure that there's no risk of missing out on marks, make sure that you spell out any abbreviation that you might want to use. Now, uh, again, I probably would want to know more about he's smoking one pack of cigarettes per day. Well, what size pack is that? Um, but I, I think the overwhelming information here is leading us towards that COPD pathway. Of course, this could be asthma, not impossible, uh, a bronchitis picture, so inflammatory changes and in leading to narrowing of the airways, producing that wheeze. Uh, there could also be lower respiratory tract infection or a community-acquired pneumonia. The time frame is a little bit off, but remember we can see changes in the chest from pneumonia for uh, six to eight weeks after initial infection as well. Uh, and, of course, we do have that big smoking history, and so one mark that uh, is a relatively safe bet uh, for these kinds of questions would be to include malignancy of some shape or form, uh, and so in this case airway malignancy uh, would be a good kind of catch-all. Whether they would accept that or a specific example such as um, bronchial carcinoma uh, would potentially uh, be up to the assessors marking it. How did you all go? Let me know. But of course, we've got more questions than that. So without further ado, let's put a, another two minutes on the clock. And of course, your time starts now. What initial investigations would you consider to confirm the diagnosis for John? Provide three appropriate responses.
All right, so how did you go there? Let's go through then to some of the answers and for here, uh, again, focusing on the fact that we are after the initial investigations, but they have kind of given us a bit of a trip by saying confirm the diagnosis. So uh, again, we're presuming they're going to be taking us down that more COPD kind of uh, pathway. And so ultimately the best one here is going to be uh, spirometry with or without DLCO. And I think really, as long as you're getting the spirometry there, that's going to get you the two marks. Uh, and... Uh, Thank you, Demir. Some excellent answers coming up there. Again, the chest X-ray, fantastic. Again, remembering these are the initial examinations, sorry, initial investigations. Uh, and so you probably wouldn't jump straight to CT chest. Certainly if there was other things down the line that uh, required that kind of imaging, you would then progress through to that there. Uh, and uh, you have put down the sputum analysis, fantastic, very appropriate. Uh, they would also accept something like uh, pathology. Uh, and I think you would need to have some kind of sensible um, answer and, and some kind of rationale as to why you'd be ordering that specific one, but it certainly would be considered. Uh, now, again, uh, excellent answer there uh, from Samir. And I will just say, just be careful and make sure we are answering the question asked and providing three answers when requested uh, to make sure you actually get all the marks there. And, oh, sorry, it looks like you're getting a bit of blurring of the screen. Hopefully it's not a connection issue. Um, you can try and uh, click the little cog icon in the corner and see if uh, changing the resolution setting there gives you any benefit. Just having a look. I am getting excellent connection from my end, so hopefully no troubles. Um, Demir, if you're having some issues as well, please pop it in the chat and I'll see if I can tinker from my end. Uh, but of course, without further ado, let's get to another question. And... Looks like that screen's okay. So yeah, Samia, uh, play with the gear icon, see if we can't get uh, some improvement there. Uh, now, question three, we'll put two minutes on the clock and your time starts now. This condition settles and further testing confirms your primary differential diagnosis and classifies it as mild. What initial, uh, what initial management options would you recommend for John's condition? Provide three appropriate responses. Dosing is not required. All right, hopefully you got some good answers there and I am seeing some fantastic answers coming through. Uh, and so here we would be looking at starting a short-acting uh, beta-2 agonist such as salbutamol or a short-acting muscarinic antagonist such as apotropium. These would be aimed at relievers given we have this classification of mild uh, and this ba is based off the COPDX guidelines. So uh, this question is presuming that uh, we do know what the diagnosis is and that we are familiar with the appropriate guidelines to use. Uh, and fantastic that you've linked in to pulmonary rehabilitation as well, or an appropriate exercise program is one of the pivotal aspects for uh, COPD management. 
Uh, and of course, never forget smoking cessation as you have put. Uh, again, that's going to be one of the big ticket items. So with two marks for this question, because uh, it's never too late to stop smoking. And so encouraging that and showing that there can be benefits uh, is definitely worth taking the time. Uh, now, they would also have accepted things like uh, uh, immunizations to appropriate things such as influenza or pneumococcus, uh, a COPD care plan or a GP management plan would be uh, also accepted in this instance, and uh, referral to Lung Foundation Australia or an appropriate support group or psychologist for self-management and support given the potential psychological impact. Uh, now, we have a question in here about just wondering, would all the answers be accepted as the question is asking for initial management? Uh, now, for this, you would only put down up to three potential answers here. Uh, and you'll often find for these exams, there are going to be more uh, steps or more potential answers than you have spaces uh, to give you some flexibility into what your particular approach would be and how you would potentially prioritise. Now, the way they kind of make sure that the high ticket items get further priority is through having things worth more marks. Uh, now, in terms of would these all be appropriate for initial management, I think definitely, in particular for something like a first diagnosis of COPD, this is something that you are going to be doing multiple things in pretty rapid succession to get that patient motivated to um, regain its, as much of a health as possible. Uh, so uh, certainly going through COPD-X guidelines, uh, these are the recommendations and that's why I've um, fleshed this out as so, but excellent question. Uh, so popping up the guidelines here as well, in fact, let's make those a little bit easier to read. Uh, for those who do get tempted to uh, start them on some of the LAMA uh, and or LABA combination therapies straight off, for those that have been diagnosed with mild disease, the initial first management would be more appropriate to start with the short-acting reliever medications. But of course, if you're not getting any re response or relief to that, that is when you would bring those in. Uh, and that is a not a trap, but uh, I think a common little situation people find themselves caught up in and is a potential stumbling block for a question like this that's asking for that first line management.